In this video, PMF the Big Lie Part 2, I'm going to show you how a 0.7 Gauss PMF device is more powerful than a 5 Gauss. You heard me right, 0.7 greater than 5. So I hope I got your attention because there's so much confusion in the PMF community about intensity. In fact, people are talking about intensity and frequency when they really should be talking about magnetic flux and frequency spectrum. And I've talked about this a little bit before in other videos, but in this video I really want to focus on Faraday's law of induction because that is the key to understanding how currents are induced in tissues. And it's not just about intensity. Intensity is only half of the equation. So basically, when it comes to the healing effects of a PMF device, there's two main things to be looking at. The first is the signal, and the second is the coil. And both are gonna be very important when it comes to inducing currents in the tissues. So as an example, we're gonna look at the biobalance PMF device, which is five Gauss versus, on the highest setting, versus the IMRS 2000 PMF, which goes up to 0.7 Gauss on the full body map. And like I said, I'm going to show you that the IMRS is more powerful than the biobalance. And this is physics. So how is that possible? Well, part of the confusion in the PMF community comes from my first video, PMF the Big Lie, where I talk about how the inverse square law is used incorrectly. Meaning, all PMF coils have different sizes and geometries. We can't treat them all like an infinitesimally small point source. And that gives us answers that are off by 5,000% or more, like in Dr. Pollock's book. So the second part of the big lie is Faraday's law. And a lot of the so-called experts will say, oh yeah, rapid rise and fall is important. And they say DBDT, which is change in magnetic field over time. But that is not correct. That is only half of it. It's actually DFDT. And we've got to put a minus sign in here for Lenz's law. I'm not going to get into Lenz's law in this video, but it's very important not to forget that minus sign. But what is phi? Okay, so phi is the flux. So what exactly is flux? Well, flux is basically area times intensity, meaning you can't just talk about the magnetic field intensity because that's just at a one point. What you've got to do is you've got to integrate over the entire surface of the source. In this case, it's a current loop, so we integrate over the entire loop. So what that means is, like here's an OMI coil, if we've got a little tiny coil that's the same intensity as this, and this has 121 times more area than this, this is going to have 121 times more flux. So basically flux is the area of the coil times the intensity. Okay, not just the intensity. Think about it. Do you think the intensity, if we had these two coils with the same exact current strength, do you think they're going to have the same intensity? No, because it's area times intensity. You've got to integrate over the entire source. And this is why we can't use a 1 over R squared law. I had a really big epiphany when I was looking at the biobalance on my oscilloscope versus the IMRS. And what I was seeing was that the IMRS had a greater voltage induced in the loop than the biobalance. And I'm like, what, what's going on here? And for a while, I was hardly getting any signal at all out of the biobalance because they're using just a sine wave. And then it dawned on me, it's like, oh, they're using a sine wave. That is not a rapid rise and fall signal. And what we want to look at is not the signal in the actual current in the loop. We want to know the signal in the field because that's what's going to be inducing currents in our body. So my near field probe loop is kind of like our tissues, right? Where it's, it's in, the currents are inducing and the oscilloscope is showing you the voltage plotted versus time. So what I saw was the IMRS, Beamer, and QRS all had a much greater voltage than the biobalance, even though they're only one-tenth or so of the intensity. That is to say, less is more. Literally, lower intensity in this case is more powerful than higher intensity. And again, there's three factors. It's the rapid rise and fall signal. So a sawtooth has this abrupt rise and fall. Okay, and that's going to be related to the DFDT. The quicker that it rises, the smaller this number, which means the greater the EMF. So it's kind of like striking a match. We strike it abruptly. Or like swiping a credit card, we swipe it quickly. 
this gives it, the swipe of a credit card is actually more magnetic induction when you swipe it more quickly. If you just did like a sine wave back and forth slow, you're not going to induce as much current and therefore the credit card reader might not read your card. So basically it's the intensity, so the, again intensity is part of it, times the area of the coil and then the third component is the d phi dt, how rapidly does it rise and fall. So a square wave is another good example of a rapid rise and fall. And here's the thing, the original research done by Andrew Bassett on, on, on bones, they used the sawtooth waveform and what Andrew Bassett found was that the sawtooth was working better for bone stimulation than any other waveform he was looking at. And also the square wave, Dr. Goodwood at NASA found that the square wave was also one of the most effective or in his study the most effective signal because of the rapid rise and fall. When you have a sine wave type of a signal, that is not a rapid rise and fall. That's a slow, gradual change. And because of that, when you put a near field probe and measure the field, you end up with a smaller voltage that's induced. And again, some people that do oscilloscope demonstrations that are putting the, the probes on the current, that's cheating. Because what you want to see is you want to see how much voltage is induced in a current loop which is going to then relate to how much voltage is induced in your tissues to promote healing currents. So this is proof the physics of low intensity with rapid rise and fall is going to create more induction than a sine wave that has a higher intensity. It's not only lower intensity, it's also remember they're bigger current loops and, and the IMRS, Beamer, QRS all use bigger loops. The biobalance uses smaller loops. So when you combine the fact that it's a smaller area and a slower rapid rise and fall, you end up with about a quarter of the voltage induced. And I, I really actually took the probe and put it right in the middle of the coil. I wasn't getting any reading above the mat. It was, it was really shocking. And so-called experts are promoting these sine wave systems, but they're not creating really much of a biological effect. I mean, I'm not saying it's no biological effect because there is definitely some current induced. But the other big problem with sine wave systems is that they they're not giving you a broad spectrum of frequencies. This is why when I looked at all the different PMF devices that are out there, or at least the ones available in the US, that are safe, low frequency, low intensity within safety standards, there was really only four devices, IMRS, Beamer, QRS, Metathera, that had a signal that was really worth looking at in my opinion. But the problem with the biobalance, even though it's got several of these coils, is it's using the slow rise and fall and kind of just a simple modulated sine wave. And that's just not inducing enough current in the tissues to really create true healing. Again, you need that rapid rise and fall and you're not going to get that in the sine wave. So now I want to put on the screen a couple shots of the IMRS sawtooth wave and the biobalance like sine wave. But you'll see that what's being plotted is voltage versus time. And you're going to see that it's a much smaller voltage. And I cranked it all the way up to the 100% highest intensity. And same thing with the IMRS, and, and the zoom windows are the exact same zoom windows. In fact, they're all the way down to the, the smallest 50 microvolts. So what, what you're seeing is basically the IMRS, and this is also true for the QRS, the QRS is similar in the voltage that's induced, is going to be more powerful than the biobalance. So basically what's governing what I've been talking about today is Faraday's law, and it says EMF is minus d phi dt. But remember, d phi dt is the intensity of, of the field times the area, and then how quickly it changes, up, you know, how rapidly does it rise and fall. And literally, Faraday's law runs our economy. You know, all of the power companies using Faraday's law to generate a current in your appliances that you use in your house. So, so in a PMF device, Faraday's law is the EMF and PMF. It is the driving force that creates the, the ion transport and induction in your tissues. And you need a rapid rise and fall, and again, not just rapid rise and fall, but you do want a larger current loop to create more flux so that you can cover a larger area, more of your organ. I mean, if you've got a little tiny current loop, you're only covering a little tiny area. You know, and even if you have several of these in the mat, it's just still getting a little tiny area in each part. So when shopping for a PMF device, definitely look for one with a good signal like the IMRS or Beamer or QRS. Look for one that has larger current loops and make sure that the signal has a rapid rise and fall. Now there are other components I've talked about in other videos like pulse pause modulation, changing polarity, those are all important too.
But when it comes to intensity in PMF therapy, it's not the most important thing. It's not the second most important thing. In fact, intensity is way down the list as being only part of this inductive effect. So it's literally, intensity is one third of Faraday's law. And, I tell, and Faraday's law is only half of the equation. The other half is, like I tell people on a spectrum analyzer, the other eye is showing you the frequency of spectrums on a spectrum analyzer. But on an oscilloscope, what we're really looking at is Faraday's law and seeing like, okay, how abruptly does the signal rise and fall and how much voltage is it gonna induce in your tissues and cells? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I have many more videos coming. Leave some comments. I'd like to know what you think and, and tell me if there's any other videos that you'd like to see in the realm of PMF therapy. So thanks again and have a great rest of your day.